The Swiss Army Knife, one of the most iconic tools of all time. It was a multi-tool before multi-tools were cool. And yes, that is the sixth take on that sentence. Now the question is, can it be used for whittling and for carving? The answer is yes, it definitely can. How does it stack up to some of the other options that you can buy, some of the dedicated pocket carving and whittling tools? The answer is it stacks up pretty well. And the fact that you can use it for things other than carving and whittling means that you can carry this around with you every day. And whenever the mood strikes, you can whip it out and start carving. Now, I will say there are a few things you can do to make it an even better carving knife, and that's what we're going to talk about today. First, we'll take a look at how it works right out of the box, and then we'll take a look at a few modifications that you can make to make it an even better whittling tool. For that part, I'm going to switch over to voiceover Grant because, as always, he is much better at this than I am. This is the Swiss Army Tinker, as it's called. Now, the first attachment, one of many, is the can opener slash small flathead screwdriver. The second is the bottle opener slash large flathead screwdriver. And what a beauty it is. Next up is the small knife. Now this is the one that's most interesting to me because I feel like it'll be most useful for those small details in carving and probably the one I'd use most often. So that's the one I think we're gonna focus on today. Next up we have the long blade. Now this one could be useful for roughing out certain carvings, really getting in there and just getting rid of some of that wood. Next up we have the Phillips head screwdriver. I love the placement of this because you can rotate it just like a screwdriver, if you will. And then finally we have the reamer slash hole puncher. I guess that could be useful. And now we come to what is arguably two of the most important parts of the Swiss Army knife. First, the toothpick. For all those things you get stuck in your teeth, and then the tweezers. Maybe you get a splinter while you're wood carving and you need to get it out. Good thing you got some tweezers. Now I realized pretty quickly that this little keychain thing has got to go. Uh, it gets in the way a lot, especially when using the small blade. So the first thing I did was try a pair of craft scissors. That didn't work so well. I thought that these little pliers here with their wire cutter would work, but uh, well, as it turns out, Either I'm too weak or these are, I'm not sure which. So I thought it'd be fun to just start out trying the knife as it is without any modifications to see how well it works. Uh, it took me a while to find the small blade for some reason, but once I did, I dug into this little piece of uh, scrap wood that I have. And as you can see, it handles it really well, right out of the box, no sharpening. I was pretty impressed. So overall, even if you bought one of these without the intention to modify it, I'd say you made a pretty good purchase, especially for the price point. And as you can see, it's handling this very well. Now let's go ahead and see how the longer blade stacks up. Unsurprisingly, just as well as the shorter blade, but longer. At this point I figured I'll go ahead and carve a face into this piece of wood just to get a feel for how it is to actually carve something with this. Now, as you can see it goes pretty well and I'm very happy with the thinness of the blade and how sharp it is. It just works. Uh, the only problem is that given that the end of the blade is a little bit rounded it makes it kind of tough to tell exactly where the knife is going to cut at all times. So for those smaller more intricate details it takes a little more finesse maybe uh, because I'm getting used to. So. For the purposes of this video, the modification seems like it's going to probably be the way to go. Of course, even still, this turned out pretty good for taking me like two or three minutes, so I'm pretty impressed. But in my effort to make this the perfect carving tool, something had to be done. So all I really needed was a way to make a straight line, so I got this piece of factory edge cardboard and a sharpie and basically just made a line from the base of the blade to the tip, cutting out that kind of curved edge that I didn't like as much. So ideally this is what I would be left with once the cutting is done, and we'll do that in the next step. Now the first step is to get rid of this key ring, or whatever you want to call it, so I'll get that right off of there. And a little note, a little disclaimer, uh, this is the first time I've tried this, and uh, 
I should have been wearing gloves while I was going through some of this, so just keep that in mind. So the first order of business was to get rid of this keychain holder thing, and I just used my cutoff wheel on my rotary tool for that. It just pops right off, basically. And then I came back in with my grinding stone and smoothed it out. Now I will say that the camera angle that I was using here made this a little bit tricky to hold the way I probably would have preferred. So if I had that to do over again, it probably would have been a little more steady. But you know, overall, at the end, I was pretty happy with the result. All right, so now comes the fun part. I just used that same grinding wheel and basically went up and down the blade softly at first. And then I do want to point out here, make sure that every few seconds you're dipping the blade into water because uh, if it overheats, it can damage the metal. And pretty much over the next few minutes, I just went over this again and again to get it down to that line that I had made. And at a certain point, this is what I was left with. long last it was time to sharpen so I have a whetstone that I use primarily for this kind of more in-depth sharpening obviously it was pretty dull at this point so I needed to take off quite a bit of the steel so I started with a rougher grit moved my way down to a finer grit and eventually I was able to put a pretty decent edge on the blade of course once that was done I moved on to the leather strop to really put that fine edge on it which I really like for carving obviously and uh, that really got it to where I wanted it to be. I didn't get footage of the leather stropping, but uh, just take my word for it. So here we are with our final result. So that hideous clip is gone and it makes it a lot easier. For some reason I opened this because again, I forgot where the small blade was, but here we go. This is my final result. Now, eventually I may come in and sharpen that down at more of an angle from the top but for now, it works pretty well. And I'm really happy with how I was able to get in with those smaller details that I wasn't able to so much when that blade was a little more rounded, like I mentioned before. And obviously that was the whole goal. So I call this a success. And just for comparison's sake, here is the long blade with that more rounded tip. And then compare that to the new blade we made there's quite a difference. Of course, this video wouldn't be complete without a point of comparison, so I went ahead and just carved another face just to see how much I like the new style of blade, and I will be very honest with you, I liked it a lot. Now, of course, Victorinox, the manufacturer of the Swiss Army Knife makes a lot of different models, so why did I choose the Tinker, you may be wondering. Well, it's the perfect size, in my opinion, it fits right in your hand, it's not too small like the Classic, and it's not too big like the Farmer or the Hiker. Some of those tools that those bigger ones do have, like the saw, can be really nice, but I prefer the more slim design that the Tinker has. And it also is missing one crucial tool, and that is the corkscrew. Uh, I excluded any knife that has the corkscrew because it digs into your palm while you're trying to carve. So in my opinion, the Tinker is the perfect mix of just having what you need and not having anything that you don't. So can a Swiss Army knife be a great whittling tool? Honestly, yes. And I was surprised at how well it works for that purpose. I've had a lot of dedicated carving tools and this one works almost as good as some of them and even better than others. So is it at the top of the line? Probably not. Uh, flex cut carving jacks and different stuff like that are probably at the top of the line. But for 20 bucks, you can get a Tinker, which is my personal favorite, especially because of the quality that you get. Uh, obviously, this is going to last a very, very long time. Now, the best part for me is that it's not just a carving tool or a whittling tool. It's got the screwdriver on there, the can opener, different things that'll come in handy for different reasons beyond just the carving tool. It's compact enough you can carry it with you every day. And if you ever need to get something out of your teeth, you got something there.
And with that, the video is complete. So let me know in the comments if this is something that you would consider trying for yourself. And uh, I'd just be curious to know your thoughts. As always, you can like and subscribe, but I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life. You can do what you want. Until next time.